Hi friends and welcome back for an extra special Saturday video. I was honored to be asked to guest design for Purple Onion Design's newest release which is out today and so I wanted to share some of my design team projects with you as well as make a really fun Christmas tag. So this card features Bluster, Dasher, and Santa's Workshop. And then we have these sweet little mice. This is Sugar and Chippy with the Toy Workshop background. That whole background scene is one stamp set including the floor. How amazing is that? And then the project we're working on today has balsam and winter, a little bird and a penguin, as well as the destination sign, which I absolutely love. It's super Christmassy and brings a lot of whimsy to my little scene we're going to make. I have one of the sentiments. I thought this was the one I was going to be using, but I ended up switching it up at the end. And then this is the previous re previously released pine tree farm stamp. So I am going to be building on a tag. It's actually going to be almost like a mini slimline size card by the time we're done. Um, but I love these tags from uh, Ranger and Tim Holtz, at the, dis the distress tags. And I just thought it would be really fun to kind of change it up and turn my scene into a tag instead of just another card. So I am setting up my scene now and what I like to do is set my background images down first, lay my featured images on top and then I lay, I close my misty door with my um, stamping gel plate thing. My, it has an official name. I'll put it down in the description box below for you. I got this from, um, Purple Onion Designs as well. They sell this in their shop in a couple different sizes. This is the easiest way that I found to use my red rubber stamps. And you can see I'm using an extra piece of old packaging from another stamp set to just make sure that I like the placement of all of my images. And then once I'm happy, I move my packaging out of the way. I re-ink up my stamps and stamp those images down. So I have both of my main characters and my signs stamped in place. Then I'm going to stamp those same images onto a full stick post-it notes. This is my preferred way to create masks for my images. So I'm gonna stamp onto there and then fussy cut those guys out. I did show one of my fussy cutting um, processes here, but the other two I'm going to do off camera just to save us some time. Because this does end up being a full scene card and I really wanted to show you the process um, of using my red rubber stamps and creating this scene, this is a little bit of a longer video for me. So I had to kind of cut where I could. So once I had all of my images uh, masked up, you can see I'm just using a scrap piece of cardstock to kind of set my little scene off to the side so that way when I go to stamp my trees into place I have room on either side to kind of center up my scene however I want it. So I'm doing the same process as before laying down my packaging making sure my sentiment looks straight and you can see here that I am not paying attention to what I'm doing and I adjusted my cardstock or my coloring paper. This is actually Copic Express It paper that I'm coloring on. And uh, so I shifted it to make it straight and then I didn't realize I was going to be stamping on top of that post-it note. And when I went to re-stamp I pushed too hard and it wasn't perfectly lined up and so the yours came out thicker and kind of like smushed. And so I'm going to end up trimming that off and we're going to just stamp the sentiment straight onto our tag. So I don't want you guys to feel disheartened like if you go to make a scene like this and it doesn't turn out perfectly the first time you are not alone that happens to me all the time and I kind of just wing it and improvise as I go and make it work. Anytime I create masks uh, with my full stick post-its I try really hard to be careful when I'm removing them and I try to store them to reuse at least two more times I find that I can easily get three or four uses out of each before they start to kind of fall apart or get too inky. So I, you can see I trimmed the bottom right off of that <laughs> um, scene, cut that sentiment right out, and I'm just trimming up the edges so that I have a good little bit of border all the way around. And then we are gonna get to work on kind of enhancing our tag. So uh, these tags are fun because they kind of have a creamy color to them, but I wanted to change it up. That kind of manila color just wasn't working for me. So I went in with two different red distress inks 
and uh, barn door and fired brick. And I am just going to ink up the edges. I'm not focusing on the center because that is where our scene is gonna get adhered. But I worked my way the whole way around with that barn door first, just kind of building up my saturation. And I'm just using one of the scraps of my full stick post-its from my masks to keep my fingers out of the ink and not get all my hands all inky because then with my luck, I know I'll touch my Copic Express It paper and then there will be red where there shouldn't be red in my winter scene. So once I had a good base with that, I went in with that fired brick and then just to add a little extra pizzazz, I grabbed one of the new holiday mica spray stains. This is so beautiful. It gives such a beautiful mica metallic shimmer. Um, and I really love the texture that it gives kind of peeking out around the scene once we add that on at the end. So then it was time to jump into my Copic coloring. I started out with my sky. I knew I kind of wanted to just create a kind of frosty blue sky. And I also knew I wasn't gonna worry about having it be snowing or anything like that. I really wanted my focus to be on my little characters and I'm just creating a really soft ombre from the horizon line, working my way up. And then once I get to my lightest shade, I'm gonna use that, my B quadruple zero, and I'm gonna work from the top down just to create a nice blend between the triple zero and the quadruple zero. Skies are not my favorite. If you've been here before, you probably know that. Copic coloring skies makes me super anxious. Um, but something like this where it is so small and there's so much other detail going on, I find it a lot less daunting because I know that I'm gonna be able to knock out the rest of my images out of the park and they'll help distract from anything in the sky that I might not love. So then I started coloring in my pine trees and I'm working from the kind of part that would be underneath of where the shadows would be and flicking my color down. And I'm gonna make sure through all of my colors that I'm using to leave some white space at the bottom of each kind of rung of the tree. And that's gonna act as our little snow buildup on each layer. And I just think it's a really fun way to add in that snow without having to go back in with a white gel pen or something to add in the shading. So you can see now I'm working from the bottom area up with my lightest green and I'm working hard to make sure I leave that little sliver of white and I also don't want the white to be in a straight line. So letting it kind of be jagged and bumpy just really lends to that kind of natural snow texture. And I repeated the same exact process on those last two trees. Then it was time to go into my little snow and start adding in some shadows and footsteps. So I'm going in with the B63 first and I wanna just kind of give it, give my animals some footprints so it looks like they walked into the scene, they're meeting up and not like they just kind of dropped from the sky, which to be fair, the bird could have, the penguins can't fly, right? So he had to waddle in from somewhere. And so, uh, yeah, so I shaded that in and then I went in with my B60 to start blending that out. And then I to pull in some of the same blues that would be reflecting back from the sky on our white snow, I went back in with the B triple and quadruple zeros just to help blend that out. You wanna make sure you're leaving white space on your snow so that it still looks white, but you don't wanna leave so much white space that it looks like you forgot something. So then I decided for my destination sign to give it some candy cane stripes, some North Pole kind of feels. So I went in with a couple of my red markers just to kind of create a really soft and gentle shading. There isn't a ton of room there. Um, and then I'm gonna go back in with some wood grain colors for my little signs, making sure to leave the snowy area on the top as clean as possible. I did add some of those kind of B60 and B000 shades to their, those snowy areas as well. And you can see I'm outlining my signs with the darker and then only taking my lightest brown shade through the middle so that the sign is still very legible. To shade in my little penguin, I'm going in with the black marker, which I don't use all the time when I'm creating black, but I really wanted to really define all of his edges really clearly in this one. So I added a little bit just to the outline and then went in with my neutral grays, the eight, six, and four, just to shade in the rest of him. 
and I definitely stuck with my darker and like medium shades versus a lot of lighter shades again just because I really wanted him to have uh, a really strong definition and really pop against all of the other lighter colors in the background so I went in with the lighter neutral grays to shade in his face and his little belly and I also I think I cut it out but I went in with R20 to give a little blush to both of my critters cheeks then I shaded in his little feet and his beak he's so stinking cute and then I wanted to give him Christmassy kind of apparel. So I went in with those same red markers I used for my sign. I'm gonna use the same red markers for all of the reds in my card or on my scene, I should say. And went in with the same soft neutral grays or cool grays and kind of mixed them together and shaded in my scarf and the little hat and the white parts on my candy cane. Um, and I'm going to use the same reds as uh, that are on the hat for the red parts of my candy cane. And then once the white parts are all dry, I will go back in with the red on the hat and color in those little polka dots. I wanted to make sure that my ink was dry so that, you know, the colorless blender that was on there wouldn't pool and kind of let the red bleed. So if you are going to be mixing or adding pattern or colors like that to your image, just make sure you give yourself a couple minutes kind of switching back and forth between what areas you're working on so that the ink has time to dry and kind of set into place. So there I'm just adding in the color to the polka dots and on his scarf and his hat and his candy cane is all colored up. And then just to kind of contrast that, I gave the little bird uh, white brim and with the red actual body of the hat so that they kind of look like they go together without being super matchy and I gave him I knew I wanted to give him a little red kind of Santa suit jacket and then the bird himself I was kind of torn on what colors I wanted to use but I wanted something that would kind of pop and also still feel very wintry so I went with some blue markers and I made him a little bluebird so cute um i just love this color combination together as well the 18 16 and bo4 i think they work really beautifully and give you that really nice bright vibrant blue um, and then for his eyes and his belly i pulled some e70 markers which are so cool toned they're almost on the kind of like taupey purple side so I thought that would be a nice kind of accent color to go with all the blues and the cool tones. And then he got the same shades as the penguin for his little feet and beak just to kind of pop. And now I'm going to go in with those same, same reds as before to shade in his little Santa jacket, giving him some kind of white detailing on his sleeves. Uh, just again to add in an extra little detail and a little extra character but these little guys um Cece Yakula is the one who uh draws these for purple onion designs and they're just so stinking cute and I love that you can mix and match um the red rubber stamps from older releases and kind of you know combine them to make whatever new scene you want um I just think it's super fun so I shaded in his little present and then I, this is me going in again, using my extra piece of packaging just to test out and make sure that I like the placement of my sentiment. You could see the Christmas was a little bit angled. So I shifted it and then committed and stamped it onto my tag. And I'm going to go in with just liquid glue and put my scene into place. And then I'm going to grab a couple different twines and have some fun mixing a kind of neutral twine with a white and green stripe that just came off of like a stamp order that I had placed and they sent it like wrapped up. So I like to do a main loop through my, the little hole there and kind of pull the excess through the loop and then go back in with one of my strings to tie a little bow just to hold it in place. And then my absolute favorite thing to do to make sure that my strings don't fray is to put a tiny bit of liquid glue on my fingers and just roll my fingers over the edges of the twine and it just kind of helps to seal them up. If you like a more kind of rustic look, go for it, let them fray, but I like them to be nice and neat and tight. So that's my solution for that. 
So I hope that you had so much fun making this tag with me. I hope you will go check out the Purple Onion Designs newest release. It's out today. Thank you so much to them for letting me guest design. And I hope that you have an amazing weekend. And as always, happy crafting. <laughs>